Okay. So you're the you're the tech department, are you, Dirk? I'm I run the live stream. I did I did this was doing it for a living, but uh, um, too many people are doing it for free, so you can't charge. Yeah. <laughs> there there it goes, but uh, yeah, I uh, I just moved to Kansas. Um, we are this is doing it. really well with the light, though. camera we use A on a normal camera we use the ISO Just so they can see people in right. the church, but not enough to show an actual face or anything. Yeah, yeah I thought I loved doing it, but, um, but I was doing it for music, so yeah. um, miles and miles of cords and microphones. Yes. So the hardest part is the actual mixing the board, oh, yeah. and the, the cameras, you know, they use black magic, yeah. uh, the ATM minions. They've got an ATM and an ATM and an Pro. Put them together at seven channels. Um, two of the channels are used for computers, which read as a, a camera anyway. And it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful system. And uh, I can go back later and still have it. Well, not do the full pile, but uh, my favorite trick is to get on burns of that. Fix the current mic. No, I mean, no, like, if you can hear a choir, I mean, we don't have choirs right now. The current mic right but now? But the lips are moving at the same time, even if it's just in a different room down the street. The current mic? Three and a half frames, I bet. Five seconds to get up. Yep. Another five seconds. Thanks for talking to me.
morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Faith Lutheran Church. On this beautiful sunny day, I have a few announcements. Um, starting with the Ladies Bible Society, uh, Bible Study, sorry. That will be this Wednesday, October 27th at Faith. And I believe that's at 10 a.m. It's in your bulletin. Uh, the Operation Christmas Child. The boxes, uh, Carol Wilkinson is working on this. The boxes are in the uh, entrance over here to, to your left. Um, they need to be back to the church by November the 13th. Uh, the church council has formed a committee and they're looking for four volunteers from Faith and Grace to work on this committee. And that is to uh, look at ways to increase income from, from Faith and Grace. The uh, um, Congregational Guild or the Seminary Guild is looking for a chairperson for that committee. There will be a voters meeting on November the 7th. That will be after the uh, church service here at Faith. And the church council nomination forms are ready. And there's the boxes are in, in the hallway to insert your uh, nominations into. Also, uh, Marion Rutledge, and on behalf of the trustees, would like to thank all the volunteers that helped us yesterday at the fall cleanup. And as a result of all the work done, we are canceling the work schedule for next Saturday, October the 30th. So, um, the opening hymn, the opening hymn is uh, Praise God, Sing Praises to God, The Highest Good, which is number 819 of your opening.
failure to keep your holy commandments in our thoughts, words, and deeds, as well as the good we fail to do. Deliver us from the darkness of death by the light of your Son's saving death on the cross and the power of his resurrection. Speak now your divine word of forgiveness, light, and salvation. Amen. In thy stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise and we we'll speak responsibly the angel. I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have come and quieted my soul. Like a wind child with its mother, like a wind child is my soul within me, O Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here. 
With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from Hebrews, Hebrews 7, verses 23 to 28. The former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, for first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came, up, came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the tenth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus heals Bartimaeus. Please rise. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples, and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. The men rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We confess now our Christian faith is speaking the nice in truth. I believe, I believe in one, one God, 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 Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again from the dead the scriptures and is set in heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose true kingdom will have no end and I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets 
and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the seventh hymn, Amazing Grace. Think 
about the mission and ministry of our congregation. For the month of November is also the month of our congregation's anniversary. As this, as this year we celebrate 40 years serving God's people here at Faith in London and thanks God for 15 years at Grace in the Strasbourg in Canada. Yes, we have every reason for rejoicing. When we think of all the blessings that God has bestowed upon us as a congregation. At the same time, we should ask Him to continue blessing us in the ministry that our church undertakes in His name and by His command. In the Apostle Creed, we confess that we believe in the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. We believe that the church is what it is, and that this congregation is what it is, because it is God's church. God brings his people together as a church for the mutual care and concern we give to one another. For the encouragement we provide for one another and for the service we can offer one another. He brings us together as a church or perhaps even better as his family to live, work, love, laugh and suffer together as his children. And during this month of November, as we look forward to celebrating another year of our family history, we want to focus on our church and its mission and ministry. We want to focus on the challenges and opportunities we have as God's church and how we can help this congregation be the best it can be. Our text today gives us a good starting point as it speaks to us of the priest or pastors of the Old Testament in contrast with the perfect priesthood of Jesus Christ. When we think of the church, we tend to think of it as a group of people who gather together in God's name, who call a pastor to serve them and to share God's word with them. And happy is the church which finds a good and faithful pastor to shepherd the flock. Friends, how to describe the perfect pastor? The perfect pastor is the one who condemns sin but never hurts anyone's feelings. He works from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. in every type of work. He has a nice family, drives a good car, and gives 10% of his salary to the church. He also contributes to every good cause that comes around. He spends all his time with a straight face because he has a sense of humor that keeps him seriously devoted to his work. He makes 15 calls a day on church members, spends all his time evangelizing the unchurch, and is never out of the office, and he's always available. Friends in Christ, I do not know of any pastor who meets those standards. For that matter, I really do not know any pastors, myself included, who truly meet the biblical qualification of a pastor. Here, what Ephesians chapter 4 speaks about pastors. Now, the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, 
He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how he can take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he might become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Friends, have you met this kind of pastor? What we do see is something far different. There was a time when people held pastors in respect and reverence and felt they deserved it. But today, more people tend to think of clergymen as money-hungry, power-hungry, and caring individuals who are only out to serve themselves, not the people of the church. But pastors are not perfect, but they are also are not as bad as they are often made out to be. Like all the people of the church, they are sinners. Our text reminds us that all of the priests of the past have to offer sacrifices for their own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. The law appoints as high priests men who are weak, our text says. We pastors make mistakes, just like everyone else. We have our strengths and weaknesses just like everyone else. We face the same temptation and struggle with them, just like everyone else. And we need forgiveness, just like everyone else. That's why we all, pastors and laymen, need the ministry of the only perfect shepherd, perfect pastor, our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus is the perfect shepherd because, as our text tells us, he is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He does not sing like other pastors. He does not have the weaknesses or make the mistakes of other pastors. He does have all the qualities we would expect of the perfect pastor. He is a great preacher who speaks God's word with wisdom and authority. He teaches us God's word in his truth and purity, for he himself is God. He is a caring, concerned pastor of his people, dealing with them in all their times of worth and need, giving himself to serve his people, even to the point of exertion. In Christ, we have a shepherd who gives us the comfort we need in our moments of sorrow or fear, as he assures us of his love and of his power to help and save his people. In Christ, we have a pastor who do not only announces that we are forgiven, he is actually the one who gives us that forgiveness as he gives himself for his people in the greatest act of ministry, dying in our place upon the cross and then overcoming death himself in his glorious resurrection to continue to minister to his people. That perfect shepherd still ministers among us. He is with us now, still speaking to us through the word of Holy Scripture. He is with us, surrounding us with his love and care. He is with us to help, encourage, and strengthen his people. But he also ministered through the under shepherds or pastor he has given to the church. The Apostle Paul tells us, 
And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Jesus gave pastors to the church to help God's people grow in their faith and life. He did not give pastors as the hired hands of the church, but as the shepherd of God's people. He did not give pastors to rule over the church, but to work with the people in the service of Christ. He did not give pastors as the sinless judges of the people of the church, but as forgiven sinners to share that forgiveness with other sinners. And what a blessing, what a blessing it is when the church and its pastor work together as brothers and sisters in Christ to do all that God tells us our gracious Father has made it possible for us to do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 11 years ago, I accepted your call as an assistant pastor. Please note that I was not hired. I was called by God through you to work with you. And when I took this call, I did not do it because I felt I was the perfect pastor for the job. In fact, if anything, I felt and I confessed that I was the wrong man for the job. I thought that my skills would serve better in a Spanish setting because my first language is Spanish. My English was not good, and, there, and I still, I still struggle with, with English. I am hoping that by now you are used to my accent and you understand what I said. If you cannot hear me, you might be closer to me, you will be able to hear me. <laughs> anyway, I thought also that I didn't have the mission skills the congregation needed. But my friends in Christ, God is not confined. This is very important. God is not confined by our human understanding of things. And so he brought us together as pastor and people to work together in his kingdom. And in spite of my abilities and limitations, and for that matter, in spite of your abilities and shortcomings, he has done great things as we have worked, worshipped, prayed, and served together in his church. He has brought great blessings to our mutual shared ministry. That is because the perfect shepherd, Jesus Christ, is the true pastor of this church. His ministry of forgiveness and life has made a difference. His ministry has made us what we are today. We can be sure that this perfect shepherd will continue to work with us to bless all we undertake together as pastor and people in his church. For my part, I will seek to be faithful to my calling as a servant of Christ. I will try with the help of God to be what all God's people should be, imitators of Christ. I will strive to teach, 
preach, encourage, admonish, advise, help, and support, pray and care for you in such a way that you will see Christ at work in both me and the church. But I cannot do it myself, just me. I cannot do any of it without you. Christ has not called pastors to work alone, but with God's people. So I ask you to pray for me, to forgive me when I need it, to work with me and help me to minister to you and to our community. And we will see God do great things among us here at faith and at grace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our offering him 846 in stanza of one. Help them to serve all people according to your holy will. 
Guard and protect also all who serve the armed forces of our country. Grant them faithfulness and success in their service, and grant that their homecomings be joyful. Lord, hear mercy. Hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Especially, we pray for Walter and Donna, for Patricia, for Annette, wife of Pastor Warren, for Sandra, for Stacy and Son, for Ritva and family, for Sarah, for Alice, for Ryan, for Bill and Vicky, for Marcia, for Shirley, for Jenna and family, for Sarah, for Susan, for Shirley, for Bill and Sandy, for Mircha, for Melissa, for Michelle, for Peter, for Ed, for Judy, for Marianne, for Cheryl, for Al, for Sue, for Mike and Anne, for Becky, for Anna, for Doreen, for Dolores, for Grace, for Nancy, for Frank, for Harry, and for Delbert. Also, we pray for those we name in our hearts and minds. Also be with those who suffer persecution for the faith, and as well have mercy on all to whom death draws near. Sustain and bless all who care for those that suffer. Lord, be your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. God our Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives, and we acknowledge your love and mercy toward us. Especially this day we put under your care the families of Charlie, Colin, Corey, and Andrew. Also the family of Natalie, family of Anna, for Paul, for Martha, for John Paul, and Marianne. Also we implore you to continue blessing the life of those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Especially for Julia, for Bill, for John, for Tay, for Micah, for Gatford, for Rahul, for Anna, for Sandy, for Blake, for Dayan, and Matthew. As well, Lord, be with those who celebrate this week another year of matrimony, especially for Stephen and Nancy, for Gerald and Joyce, and for Andrew and Laura. May you, O Lord, sustain their marriage vows, and they see each other with love, forgiveness, and mutual respect. Lord, your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. God, God our Father, we pray for those who are persecuted in the world, for being your followers, for being Christians, that you continue keeping their faith in you despite their tribulation, and help and comfort them when they are assailed by the old evil foe. Lord, mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. You remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, and bring us to at last the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who out of love for his holy creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon the cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loudly magnify his glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, mm -hmm.
God has sent into our flesh to bear our sins and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of His body and His blood on the cross. God, in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and the spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the merry feast of the last in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be your glory, honor and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. To what he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Please do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup of the supper. To what he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
peace and with great joy. Amen. Amen. We continue with Pigda Non Divinis. Lord, Lord Lord, now you let, let your servant go in peace. peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which with you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Praise God. Our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the peace to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we have concluded our worship service this morning. Thanks all for coming, especially the visitors who are with us, Wayne and others who might be here. God bless you. If you need more information from the church, contact me. I can give you a card to you, Wayne, and then you can call me. We can talk. And well, thanks everybody for coming. God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord. Amen. Nice to meet you, Lord. Have a good week, sweetheart. Have a good week, sweetheart. See ya. Same.